This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Hello and welcome to Understanding China. I'm Michael North and I've just returned from several weeks in Beijing where I have some interesting friends and ideas and people to bring to you all about uh, understanding the way that the largest country in the world by population and the second largest country in the world by economy is developing. And it's, here's a little economics lesson for us. We're pretty much reviewing what we already know, but perhaps in a slightly different light. If you see China from China's point of view, the economic development of the country, um, the development of the country has taken place in light speed. Beginning in the 19, middle 1970s, China went from being a third world country with very, uh, with, with old or limited infrastructure to now being a 21st century first world country. And the pace of that development in the last 40 years has been just incredible. We all know that. But how has that been financed? And the answer is a lot of that has been financed by debt, internally held debt that the banks of China have loaned to the government in order to create the bridges and roads and tunnels and stadiums and, and uh, bullet trains and all the big ports and so on, the tremendous wireless and optical fiber infrastructure, the satellites that have been launched, um, and bring a country of 1.4 billion people uh, largely into the 21st century. Well, that means that there is a lot of debt in China. And it generally gets handled well, and they, they're growing quickly enough to be able to handle making the payments. But they can see, as the rest of the world does, they can see around a corner, and they know that there's a limit to the debt formula. So they're looking for ways of kind of shifting the obligations for the future, the next waves of development for China, uh, more into the private sector. And they're doing something called public-private partnerships, which have been around in the United States and Europe and so on for close to 100 years. Um, a lot of our roads and stadiums and so on are financed by a combination of government land and resources and sort of guarantees and private sector funds that come in as, as investments. So they're a, they're a public-private partnership, or as they call it in China, a PPP. And China is looking for ways to finance PPPs that don't use debt, that use different types of instruments. So we, um, Asia Pacific Group, uh, decided to bring our colleague Arthur Lipper, who's an expert on revenue royalties, which is an advanced, very fascinating way of financing companies and large projects uh, that doesn't involve debt, doesn't involve equity dilution. Uh, and a little bit of that story later, but I want to bring you into a press conference that took place a few days ago in Tianjin, which is a satellite city of Beijing, um, a short bullet train ride away. And we were brought into the headquarters of the Tianjin Financial Assets Exchange and introduced to a group of bankers, financial managers, investment people, government people, and so on, to begin a process of education that took, well, we got the first, the first steps taken in, the, in, the, in three days between Tianjin and Beijing. So let's have a look at the first video clip that we have, and then we'll come back and talk a little bit more. Tianjin Financial Assets Exchange. Uh, my name is Liu Meiyan. I come from the City Trust and I'm also the operation, the uh, chief promotion officer of the PPP platform. 
uh, because Citic Trust is also a shareholder of this Kent Exchange, and I met with Miss uh, Miss Joe and Michael Moore five years ago from Asia Pacific Group, and it is also a good honor for me to meet uh, Arthur Lipper later on, and I gradually understood what bottle he is. So today, uh, here in China, we would like to introduce the concept and model of royalty here in China in order to promote the PPP <coughs> projects here in China and in order to promote the organization, the financing of small and medium-sized enterprises, as well as to make China's capital market more vibrant to make our contributions in all these regards. I'm very honored to have all these people and all these guests today present here and it is the strength of our era and of the globalization. Today, we are very honored to invite all the guests to participate in this China PPP Royalties Financial Innovation Forum as well as the announcement conference of the China PPP Royalties Research Center and the Fund Committee. We are very happy to have all of you here. In this morning's Financial Innovation Forum, Mr. Lieber will briefly introduce to you regarding the design concept and the application approach of royalties in different <coughs> projects and investment sectors. And in this afternoon, we will still have another two hours for the roundtable discussion to have further discussion regarding royalties together with Mr. Arthur Lieber. And then for tomorrow and Friday, we will have another training session in Beijing to give you a more detailed introduction regarding the royalties. Uh, in July 2017, at the National Financial Work Meeting, President Xi Jinping emphasized that efforts need, need to be made to vigorously improve the modern financial service system in order to improve the ability of the, of the finance to serve the real economy. In particular, we need to make more efforts to increase the proportion or ratio of the direct financing and in order to provide low cost and highly efficient financing service for the real economy. We believe that we need to study the technical and economic characteristics of the PPP projects as well as their requirements for financing and vigorously <coughs> explore the direct financing routes or channels for the PPP projects, which can be conducive to make the capital market more vibrant and, and enrich more financing channels and it can also help promote the direct financing for the PPP projects with very high efficiency and it can also help attract more international investors to participate in China's new organization development. This study of royalty is based on the above mentioned consideration. Royalty is a direct financing tool with very low cost and long period which can ensure the immediate return and the revenue sharing. Uh, royalties are based on the based on the projected revenues of the invested companies or projects in the period of royalties and it will not give extra burdens for the enterprises as for the equity dilution or the debt financing and it actually goes beyond the restrictions of the traditional equity and debt financing. So the application of royalties in PPP may become a very good attempt in the innovation and diversity of the direct financing model for PPP and it will give us a few thoughts in the PPP financing. One of the people who attended the revenue royalties briefing with Arthur Lipper was Liu Kunfang, a billionaire investor and developer from Shenzhen in southern China, just across from Hong Kong. And Shenzhen is a fascinating place. In the mid-70s, Shenzhen was 20,000 people, basically growing rice in a small village, very pleasant. Today, it's eight million people, and in the surrounding area, another eight million people, mega city, manufacturing and so on. 
a lot of what the, we see, especially in electronics, including Apple iPhones and so on, comes from Shenzhen. So uh, Liu Kunfang is one of the developers who's taking on the next generation of um, economic development, real estate development, industrial technology development, and very interested in investing in new companies, new world-breaking technologies. So we had an interview with, uh, with Mr. Liu Kunfang after the program of revenue royalties. Let's have a look at that interview. Okay, we are here in Beijing at the close of a day-long financial education session uh, in a beautiful place. And I wanted to talk to one of the participants here, Mr. Liu Kunfang, who is a Chinese investor. He's investing strongly in China's domestic economy, and he's also investing worldwide in many interesting enterprises. So his philosophy as a Chinese investor is of great interest to people around the world. And this is Ren Ran. She is our translator. She'll help us make sense of it all. 好，那我们我刚我现在翻译他说的话。我们现在呢，在一个北京一个非常美丽的地方。我们现在已经经过了一天长达一天的这样的一个金融方面的培训。现在呢，我们想采访我们其中的一位培训参加培训的学员。呃，我们的这一位先生呢，他是一个非常出色的投资家，不仅在中国，也在世界各地有各种不同的投资项目。所以我们可以从他这里。了解到我们在中国的一些投资的理念，以及我们呃经营公司其他的一些理念等等。So, Kunfang, I know you have some very interesting activities in southern China, Shenzhen. Can you describe those activities and what their real purpose is? What is their mission? 好，呃，我知道您在中国的深圳南方有一些投资的项目，那您能不能给我们简单的介绍一下您的这些项目，并且给我们说一下您投资的一个目的是什么？ Okay.呃，很很高兴，谢谢谢谢Michael给我这次机会，能够说一下这个嗯，在呃南方深圳我们做了一些呃很多就是嗯高科技还有石油通讯方面的投资，呃我们公司的一个宗旨呢就是叫
，关键是在观念理念上的变化。因为啥呢？现在中国的企业已经是到了一个十字路口，首先是就是只有转念才能才能救济企业。谢谢。嗯呃、uh, ，there are several parts of it to benefit the people and benefit the world. Uh, first of all, in our company, every month we will have some free training courses provided to our employees regarding the Chinese traditional classic philosophies as to do the business. And the second, uh, we want to promote our traditional culture in this from this approach. And the second part is that we want to uh have uh one of our Business or investment philosophy is to help those people who are in need or who are in urgent need. We will invest in those projects which really need our help and need our assistance and maybe our capital. And the third part is that we want to uh, build a very good, uh, uh, a very good appear, a very good, uh, how to say that? We want to have a very good energy. In our company,、mm -hmm. we want to、uh, have. We want all of our employees to have very good health, both mentally and physically.、Mm -hmm. And based on that, we want them to have very、uh, high energy and want them to have the passion for the investment. And we another thing is that we also want them to change their mind. They need to know the essence or know the value of what we are doing.、Mm -hmm. I know, Kunfang. One area you're interested in is energy, and transitioning away from hydrocarbons like oil and gas and coal into new renewable sources. Can you talk to us a little bit about your company's investments in that field in China and beyond? 呃、uh, ，我也知道您现在在能源方面也是有一些投资，从传统的这些化石能源转移到一些新能源。那您能够给我们讲一下您在这个新能源方面的投资的项目吗？呃，这个是在呃，除了传统的石油、天然气之外，呃，新能源主要是这些就是非传统的这个石油、煤炭，呃，这些之外呢，就是主要是动力电池，就是动力电，就是动力电池。这是很重要的一个，就是包括就是呃石墨烯，还有那个锂电池、稀土电池，这些是呃呃，一个是我们也是我们呃投资的一个一个方向，呃，但是整体来说，不管它是这个呃呃能源方面，还是呃新能源方面，还是传统能源方面，最重要的是一个是能够让它能够生财，就是能够产生新的新的增长点，能够把。把这个生生不息落实到就是每个项目里面去。Uh, apart from the traditional fossil fuel like、uh, oil or gas, we are also investing in some、uh, battery projects such as the rare earth battery or the lithium battery or other new types of the batteries to use them as a, as a type of energy. And also, we want, no matter it is the traditional fossil fuel or the new energy, we want them to really benefit the people and to really have new. New growth point. We want them to like have this sustainable development all the time.、Mm. Ah. I heard that you were very interested in medical technologies, healthcare technologies.、Um, can you speak a little bit about one specific investment that you're interested in in that field? 啊，也是对于医疗还有这个保健方面，你有没有比较关注的啊 ？OK. 呃，在医疗方面，最重要的一个问题就是看病难的问题，所以说未来的话，我们是会把这个就是呃呃家庭医院结合这个通讯，结合这个中医，为整一个大的一个是呃呃健康平台，让每个人不用呃离开家庭就能呃接受呃很好的这个健康的这个呃咨询和和诊断医疗。这是我们的想法。实际上，最重要的事情是，让每个人能够把爱心给修起来，疾病就少了。嗯。Uh, as for the medical technology, what we are doing is to try to build a platform for the people to get easier access to the doctors and 
uh, hospitals because mm-hmm. now in China, sometimes it is quite hard for the people to really go to the, see the doctor because there are a lot of people there. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we want to build such a platform with maybe home doctors mm-hmm. and also some certain kind of communications and some new technologies. In this case, the patients can just stay at home mm-hmm. and can have the prescription or have the consult, uh, have the treatment mm-hmm. from the doctors that mm-hmm. will. Uh, resolve this problem and also one very important thing is that we want them we want all the people to have uh, a very loving heart as long as they care I think the disease will be uh, fewer and fewer in the future so like a DD doctor 就像一个滴滴打车, 但是您是滴滴医生, <laughs> or we call that uh, online uh-huh. home doctor or uh-huh. home hospital actually. DD is the name of the service here in China that's a lot like Uber and Lyft. You know. So a final question. You're so generous with your time. Thank you so much. I know that you are constantly on the move. You're probably headed for an airport flying away somewhere right now. You never stay in one place for more than 10 minutes. What is it that drives you? What is it that keeps you going so long, so far, so fast, so focused inside you? What is it that makes you move with such great energy? 好，那最后一个问题就是感觉您是一个停不住的人，可能过一会儿您也许就要去飞机场，飞到其他地方了，然后感觉您呃在一个地方站着，可能也插不过十秒，是一个停不下来的人。那想问一下，是什么驱动了
We're here in Beijing with a young lady who is a expert translator. Her name is Ren Ren. Is that close yes. enough? Yes, very correct. And right. her English name is pronounced Elaine, of right. course, but her real name is Ren Ren. Yes. And we've been working together the last two days with some very demanding translation of very complicated, high-energy financial terms. Right. And she talks very fast. So I wanted to get some insight from Ren Ren about who she is, where you come from, mm -hmm. why are you doing what you're doing, and where is your life, where is your career going? Okay. Okay, uh, first of all, I'm very happy to have this kind of talk. Uh, my hometown is in Langfang City, Hebei province, which is very close to Beijing. Uh, if we take the high-speed railway, it will only take us like 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. So it is very close. And so that is, that is also one reason why I'm now working in Beijing. And I studied English. Actually, I majored in English interpretation and translation for my undergraduate and graduate study, and I always wanted to be an interpreter. Uh, you know, in the past, when I saw the, t uh, when I watched the TV, I will. Uh, see someone who is sitting behind or sitting next to our national leaders, oh. I will think, wow, that is what I want to do. Mm -hmm. So uh, later on, I went to the China Foreign Affairs University mm -hmm. to major in English interpretation and translation. And also a lot of the people, a lot of the students in our university went to the Ministry of Foreign Affairs to become an interpreter in the national organization. Mm. But for me, I am a freelance now, and I really love what I'm doing now. I mm. want to be this kind of freelance. Mm. I do not want to work in such an organization full time every day. So this mm. life is much more exciting for me. Oh. So you yeah. don't want to work in the foreign ministry? You want to work? Actually, no, uh, because uh, for this kind of freelance job, I can know new people, I can mm -hmm. meet you, and, and I can know a lot of financial stuff, yeah. uh, which I didn't know before, so I can learn a lot, a lot of the new things every time. So flexibility, freedom is a very important right. thing. I think so, right, yeah. right. Mm. You think that's the Chinese side of you or the American side of you? Maybe American side, because there are now so many freelancers here in China, although the number is increasing for freelancers. Still, uh, for example, in my class, at that time we had like 24 students. I'm the only freelancer now. Oh. All of them uh, work in some organizations or companies full time. Oh. So, final question. This is a bit of a personal question. Mm -hmm. But I know that when you speak Chinese, you are fully Chinese and you have a way of thinking, feeling, moving as a Chinese. Right. But then you immediately switch over mm -hmm. and you can become part American. And thinking, feeling, moving, speaking, almost mm -hmm. a different voice, I notice, yeah. back and forth. Yeah. Can you talk a little bit about what that feels like to be one person and another person and then the other person and back and forth? Uh, yeah, maybe it is just only natural for people to have different voices when they speak different languages. It is maybe just natural, but for me, I think I'm always maybe Chinese. Mm -hmm. Yes, sometimes when I speak in English, of course, I will like speak in this language and I will think also in this language, but uh, inner me, I'm still the, the same me, the Chinese uh, girl. Yes. So what you just said in English, say it again in Chinese. Okay, uh, in Chinese, uh, 我觉得我就是一个中国的女孩,然后虽然说有时候说英语会用英语的方式思考,但是内心来讲还是一个中国的女孩。I think you can see what I meant. Yeah. <laughs> 谢谢, okay. very good to work Thank with you. Thank you. Thank you. Aloha from Beijing. So Ren Ren, who came to us from one of our close affiliates in Beijing, the Beijing Moza Translation Company, she was able to keep up with Arthur Lipper for three days solid, which is hard enough for people who are just doing it in English, but doing it in English and Mandarin at the same time. She did an outstanding job. And, you know, it's in the hands of young women like Ran Ran that the future of China rests and to some extent the future of the world rests.
So I think that we're in good hands with uh, young leaders like, like this lady. And we'll leave you with that thought. And uh, there's a lot of more material that came from this recent uh, trip to China, and we'll be bringing it to you in future episodes of Understanding China. Thank you from Honolulu.